Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, still on engineering science and three uh, working with the heat. So in this case, we are given uh, the question from November 2020. Uh, the first part of the question we are given to explain the heat value of a fuel. So what is uh, the heat value of a fuel? If you to check uh, the heat value of a fuel, may, uh, mostly if you have to check on your formula sheet, it's, it's uh, actually measured in uh, megajoules uh, per kg. So what are we talking about here? Joules per kg, what is this unit for? So we are referring to the heat. Uh, the heat value of the fuel is the amount of heat released during the combustion. So this is the heat released, okay? The amount of heat per kg, okay? So that's the amount of heat released uh, during the combustion. 5.2, we are given name three factors to consider when heating or cooling a substance. Okay, so remember that uh, whether you're heating or cooling heat lost or heat that is gained is equivalent to Q, is uh, equivalent to M, uh, C uh, times the change in what? Change in temperature, all right. So what are we talking about? We're talking about the mass, okay? So these are the figures that are going to affect here, which means we're talking about the mass of what? The material or the substance, okay? So we're talking about the mass or a substance, all right? We move on here to see which is the specific heat capacity for that substance, okay? So which means the type of material uh, is going to be very, very important in this case, type of material, okay? Uh, then also the increase or the change in temperature. Take note, it's heating or cooling, so I don't know, is it going to be a rise or a decrease? So just take this as the change in what, in temperature. So this is how you can take factors which affect anything, guys. You take them from the formula, okay? Then on 5.3, we are given that uh, a volume of, three, of a 300 liter of water is heated from 100 degrees Celsius to 240 degrees Celsius by burning of, by burning petrol, okay? So that is the material that we are talking about in this case or the fuel uh, in this case that we are having. So here, instead, we are supposed to have this as the type of what? Type of fuel. Okay, so this can be type of fuel, the fuel that is used or fuel used, okay? Okay, I think that can be much better. All right, so let's list our information on 5.3. I'm just gonna list the information down, the one that we are given. So there we are given that a volume of 300 liters is heated from 100 to 240. Okay, so the volume that we are given in this case of 100 liters is actually giving us the, the mass, okay? Uh, the one that we are given, all right? So this is 300 liters, sorry. 300 liters is actually giving us the equivalent of the mass. Remember, one kg is equal to one liter. So this will be 300 kg, so which means we are also given the mass from that way, which is 300 kgs, okay? One liter is equivalent to one kg. And we are actually given the temperatures from a temperature of 100, which is your T1, to 240, which is T2. So we're given T1 and T2. The initial temperature of 100 degrees Celsius and the final temperature of 240 degrees Celsius. So this is the information that we are given. And this is for, uh, sorry, this is for petrol. Okay, is it petrol? Okay, I'm gonna check again, uh, but that was petrol here for, by burning uh, petrol. Okay, so on 5.31, which is now we are given to calculate the change in temperature of the water. So guys, this is direct one mark. Okay, the change in temperature, that's T2 minus T1. Our, our temperature actually changed from uh, 100 to 240. Okay, so that's 5.31, the change in temperature, which is T2 minus T1. So T2, that is 240 minus 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is going to give us 140 degrees Celsius. So that was the change in temperature. All right, 5.33, 5.32, the quantity of heat. Take note, we are talking about the quantity of heat 
in this case, required to change this temperature, which is these factors that change, which means we are going back to the formula for, for heat, where Q is equivalent to MC times the change in temperature. All right, so that means uh, 5.32, the heat is mass times the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. So this is what you're going to have. Remember we said our mass is 300 kgs times we need uh, the specific heat capacity. Talk, we are talking about water. So the specific heat capacity for water, uh, which is actually uh, in this case 4187. Uh, let me show you from this information, the specific heat capacity of water here. You, this is where you take your values. Specific heat capacity of water, which is 4187 joules per case. So this is the one that you use, okay? So this is for, for water, 4187. So we are going to have 4187 in this case, 4187 times the change in temperature. We calculated this before we got 140 here from this previous information that was 140, or you can subtract 240 minus 100, still one of the same thing, you're going to obtain 140 still. So if you multiply everything, that is our heat in this case, which is going to be 17585400 like that. Okay, so guys, you have to change this. You can even convert to megajoules, okay? So that's to megajoules, which is times 10 to the exponent of six. So this is going to be three, six. So we are going to have this as one, seven, five, comma, eight, five, four, times 10 to the power of six, which is mega, which is mega joules. Okay, so that is what we had. Uh, let's check, oh, you know, we are not given to the units. So we just leave to the one that is your best at. You can even leave to kilojoules if you want, but the best there was mega joules. Okay, then, the quantity of petrol required, which means we need uh, like how many liters of petrol do we need? So what we are going to do, we are just going to calculate the mass. Remember I said one kg is equal to one liter. So we can just calculate it from the mass formula. Then we convert it to the what? To the liters. Okay, remember that uh, from our heat value, because we are going to use this petrol, all right? So remember, from heat value, uh, so this is 5.33. Remember that actually uh, the heat value is equivalent to the mass, uh, okay? That is, uh, in this case, heat value, okay? It's supposed to be like this, guys. Uh, our heat value is supposed to be the heat gained over the mass like this, okay? So we need the mass. So we can transpose here that is, uh, Q is equal to mass times the heat value. So to obtain the mass of that fuel, we can just divide by heat value. Sorry, we can divide by the heat value of that fuel, the heat value of that fuel. So you can play around with any formula, guys, that you are best at. So mass is equivalent to Q, which is the heat gained over the heat value. So we are going to have this because we are given, guys, the, 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 the heat that is being gained in this case is the one that we calculated before here, which is one seven, whatever that you have here. So this is going to be one seven five comma eight uh, five four, which is mega joules, okay? Over the, the heat value now, which we said is measured in mega joules per. So if you go back to that information, guys, for petrol, you are going to see that the, the, the heat value for petrol is 45, mega joules per kg. So I want you to check back uh, on that information that I showed you before the list of formula sheet there. Uh, so if you divide, you are going to obtain 3.3.908. Remember it's per kg. So one divided by a kg, we are going to have our kg. So this is the quantity of petrol needed the mass. Uh, but how many liters now? If one kg is equal to one liter, therefore, we are going to need uh, 3.908 liters of what? Of petrol. 
okay, uh, is needed or was used, okay? This is the one that was needed or that was used in this case, okay? So that's how we can uh, play around with formulas, guys. If the formulas are there, then everything makes, uh, everything can be much, much easier. All right, on 5.4, we are now given a consideration from our steam table. Unfortunately, I do not have the steam booklet right now, but this is direct. I'm just gonna explain how you're supposed to take this. 1 kg of steam is generated in a boiler at constant pressure. Determine the saturated temperature if the boiler pressure is at 2,000 kilopascals. Okay, so what you do is that under your steam tables, you go to pressure. Remember already your pressure is given in kilopascal. So you go straight at 2,000. What is the corresponding, there is TS there, the corresponding value for TS, that is the saturated temperature, okay? So if we go straight to that 2000, your saturated temperature, which is T, is going to be 212.4 degrees Celsius. So use your steam table, guys, right? And also I told you the steam table, you must have it in the exam. You are given this as part of your exam. So make sure that you receive your steam table uh, in the exam. All right, so that's what we had in this case. Uh, let's move on to the other part of the question, which is on 5.4, where we are given a copper plate is an area of 2,4 square meters at five degrees Celsius and must be enlarged to two comma. So what are we given here? There's a lot. Okay, so we're given the original area of the copper cable. Okay, so here we are dealing with a copper cable in this case. So this is 5.5. So originally we are given its area which is uh, at 2,4 square meters, 2,4 square meters at a certain temperature, which is the initial temperature of five degrees Celsius, okay. Then it is supposed, it's, it's needed here that, and must be enlarged to, so it's enlarged to a certain area. This area that we are given is, it's a, after enlarged, it's enlarged to, so that's a final area that we are given. Okay, from the original area to this area, that's your final area. So we are given the final area of the copper cable after enlargement. So that's our final area, which is uh, at 2,403 square meters. So the question now is calculate the, uh, calculate the temperature at which the plate must be heated to achieve the new area, which is this area that we obtained uh, and we are given the linear coefficient of expansion for copper, which is 1.7 times 10 to the exponent of negative six. In this case, we are already given. So what is the temperature? Which means we need to calculate the final temperature, which is T2. So we are to, to calculate T2 in this case, and we are given the linear coefficient of expansion for this copper as 1.7 times 10 to the exponent of negative six per degree Celsius. So uh, take note, guys, here we have got the final area and the original area, but from our formula, we know that the change in the area is equivalent to two times alpha times the original area times the change in temperature. So this is what you're going to have in this case. So since we know that T2 can be determined from the change in temperature, since uh, we have got this information that the change in temperature is equivalent to T2 minus T1. So that means we can calculate the change in temperature. Then for us to calculate T2, we just have to transpose T1 to the other side of the formula, which is going to be change in temperature plus T1 is equivalent to T2. So that means for us to have T2, we can calculate the change in, in temperature. Then we add T1 from this formula. All right. So, so far we do not have this, but we can calculate this. So, which means we need to calculate the change in temperature. If we have the change in temperature, therefore we can have T2. What about the original area? We have it, we have this, we have this. We do not have the change in area. We have got the final area. So we need to calculate the change in area. Remember that final area is equivalent to the original area plus the change in area. So to, uh, to obtain this change in area or the increase in area, we are going to transpose the original area and subtract it from the, origin, uh, from the final area. That means we have got the change 
in area in this case. All right, so our change in area, our change in area is going to be the original area, which is at 2,403 minus the original area, which was at 2,4. So if you subtract, you're going to obtain 0, 0,003 uh, square meters as our change in area. All right, so this is what we need. So like I say, you are going to calculate the change in the temperature, which is this one. So you can substitute your values since we have the change in area of 0, 0,03, uh, 0, 0,003, 0, 0,003, which is equal to uh, two times our alpha, the linear coefficient of expansion of 1,7 times 10 to the exponent of negative six times the original area in this case, which was at two, comma four times the change in temperature. So what you're going to do, you're going to divide by this on the left-hand side, you divide by the whole of this to zero comma zero three. So you're going to have your change in temperature. All right, so your change in temperature, if you divide it properly, uh, this will be like this guys, if you divide it to be zero comma zero zero three over everything that we have two times 1,7, times 10 to the exponent of negative six times 2,4. All right, so this is what you're going to have as the change in temperature of 367,647 uh, 6, degrees Celsius. So this is 647 degrees Celsius. So like I said, this was, not for, uh, this was not for us to calculate the change in temperature, but the final temperature, which is T2, so now we can have our T2 from this information. Since we said T2 is equal to the change in area, which is the one that we got of 367,647 plus the T1, which is the original temperature that we are given in this case, which was at uh, five degrees Celsius. So if we add the five degrees Celsius, we are going to obtain the final temperature in this case, which is going to be three, 172,647 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that was our T2 in this case. Okay, so that was actually the question that we had uh, on heat from this question paper of November 2020, having a total of 14 marks. That's a lot in exam, guys. This is a lot. So uh, you have to revise, guys, as much questions as possible, uh, preparing yourself for the exams, which are ahead of time so that you don't uh, lack any, any information. For now, that's what we had from Amazon African Motives till we meet again.